All right, Topic Tuesday. Okay. We're going to talk about the aorta and the body because that's what we do on Topic Tuesdays. Some of you have recently seen what we posted, what we knew about actually in January, and we did recently post this a couple weeks ago. The European and American uh, European and American experts have come together to draft a new set of guidelines uh, for the diagnosis and treatment of diseases of the aorta. And these guidelines actually represent a historic day as for the first time, the aorta is now considered to be an independent organ. And we're going to find out a little bit more about why this is exciting and what this means for all of us as patients. So in the words of the authors themselves, the medical and scientific community, they've come to realize that the aortic organ serves a unique and integral, fun uh, integral function. Oh, I can't speak today. Blah, blah, blah. Integral, integral <laughs> function, function. See, if you laugh, then I'm going to lose it. They've come to realize that the aortic organ serves a unique and integral function that makes it stand out from the heart and other blood vessels in the body. So in recognizing this importance, it's important for doctors to have updated understanding of the aorta's anatomy, its function, and the different diseases and conditions that can actually affect it. So here is a recommendation table, and basically it says there's different classes, there's different levels, and here's a recommendation. So it is recommended to view, interpret, and treat the aorta in the context of an organ, whereby diagnosis, treatment, and surveillance should be approached with this perspective. And it gives you more, more evidence of ways to, uh, to reference this, again, as being an organ. So with this viewpoint, the authors go on to discuss various components of aortic management in the document, including imaging, how to define disease throughout the aorta and the appropriate, appropriate thresholds for intervention. So one highlight from the document was the experts class one recommendation to standardize the reporting of extent of aortic disease by using Ishimaru zones. And we've talked about zones before and I'm probably butchered that name and I apologize, but this will actually help doctors prescribely precisely describe how, what is wrong with me? And I am just like, Baloop, baloop. Thank God. <laughs> that was a good one. That, that was a good <laughs> one. Prescribably. So these zones will allow doctors to precisely describe. Yeah, that's a good one. Whew, how far along the aorta and aneurysm or dissection extends by using predefined zones relative uh, to the location and branches coming off the aorta. So we have talked about this before. Here's a picture. So you've got zone zero, one, two, three, four, and so forth, five all the way down, all the way down into the abdominal where it branches off into the iliacs. Some other highlights from the new guidelines include the following. In patients with complicated type B aortic dissection and amenable anatomy, a T-VAR is recommended. That's great. That's great to just have that stated. When you have this, this is what they're recommending. And in patients presenting with acute type A dissection, emergency surgery with exclusion or resection of the primary entry tear in the ascending uh, aorta and arch is recommended. Genetic testing is recommended in patients under 60 years old with thoracic aortic disease, family history of thoracic aortic disease, arterial aneurysms and other segments and those with syndromes that predispose them to aortic disease. Aortic repair is recommended for asymptomatic thoracoabdominal aneurysms greater than five, uh, 55 millimeters or 5.5 centimeters. Surgery can be considered for ascending aortic aneur aneurysms irrespective of size if they are producing symptoms and non-aortic causes of those symptoms have been ruled out. So that's the basics. That's the beginning. This article came from Duke, but what I'm sorry, from Adam. Um, and Duke is joining back in now again this week. We should be dissecting and diving into this a little bit more because these zones, again, because it's an organ, there the idea behind this is each zone is going to have its own diagnosis, um, way of diagnosing it, way of treating it, which is in some ways makes things, I would think, a little bit. Uh, streamlined, you pinpoint to a better type of therapy, depending on what's happening in these different areas. So it's no longer going to be, am I having surgery? Am I not having surgery? I feel like it's going to turn into if I'm in this zone and this is what's happened, then this is what happens. It sounds like everything's going to be much more definitive because they decided 
to make this be an organ. So even with the butchering, it's still exciting. A lot of information, but as they delve into this Duke and Adam, uh, we're going to learn a lot more. So it's an exciting day for those of us that love our aortas. It should be all of you. And on another topic, we have some very exciting news about Duke. Okay, so if you guys know, we had Adam, third year med student, and Duke, who was our fourth year med student, except Duke matched, and he is going to be a resident at Cedar sinai Hospital. So we are so excited for him. Congratulations. Congratulations. He's so amazing. So he will be moving soon to California uh, to do work with some amazing thoracic surgeons over there and just start uh, being able to lay some hands on patients and start saving some lives. And he's still going to be working with us to help educate all of you on uh, Topic Tuesday post. But uh, matching is a big deal. And matching to some place like that is an even bigger deal. So congratulations, Duke, on all your hard work. Pay it off. We love it. We love you, Duke. Good job. Love you, Duke. All right. Now we've got a lot of welcomes 